Hello everyone, in this video I am going to show you how to make a stopwatch using C Sharp. So first of all open up Visual Studio and then click on create a new project. Then click on Windows Forms app, make sure it's C Sharp. I am going to name my project as stopwatch. And then click on create. So this will be the place where we will design our project and then open your toolbox. So we are going to need three labels for our, for our project. Search for a label and drag and drop it on your form. So I'm going to copy and paste two labels. So these are my three labels for our project. So first I'm going to rename my first label as LBL minutes and my second label as LBL sec seconds and my third label as LBL centiseconds. So then I'm going to change the text property of my first label as two dots and zeros and two dots and my second label as the same and my third label as two zeros. Then change the font of your label. I'm going to change it to 22 so we can increase it okay so then align your labels as this is a clock next we are going to need three buttons for our label so search for a button Copy and paste two more to the form. So I'm going to rename my first button as VTN start. And my second button as VTN stop. And my third button as VTN Reset and ch then change the text property of your button to your first button as start and the second as stop and the third button as preset. So then increase the size of your buttons. So this will be our the design for our project. So next we are going to need a timer for our project. So open your toolbox and search for a timer. Double click on it. And it will generate a timer for you at the bottom of your application. So make sure this enabled is to true. It's default in default it's false. And change the time interval to 10 milliseconds. So then we are going to write the code for our application. So double click on your form and it will up, uh, open up your code for you. So next I am going to write three variables as integer int 1 for our centiseconds time cs. Next as time sec for seconds and then time min for minutes. So then go back to your design and double click on your start button. So next in our code I am going to write a boolean expression. So when this bool type is true we want our timer to start and, it, and if it is false the timer will stop. 
so then I'm going to write as pool is active and then when we click on our start button we want the timer to start so if we want our timer to start we need to make sure bool is active so I'm going to write is active equals true so next go and click on your stop button so when we stop we must make sure bool is false so our timer will stop so I'm going to write as is active equals false so then I'm going to write our code for our preset button so when we reset our timer we need to make sure is active is false so our timer will be resetted so in this we, we, we must make sure our time is reset so then I'm going to write a code to reset our time so reset time brackets and then press control dot to generate the function reset time so delete, delete this extra part so then I'm going to make sure our, our variables time.cs time set and time in is equal to zero time.cs equals zero time dot min equals to zero and time dot time sec is also equal to zero so we must also enable the reset time function in our form because when we start our application it must be also equal to zero so i'm going to write as reset time the reset time function and brackets and comma so next I'm going to make sure our is active is false when our when our form starts so write is active equals to false so when we start our application it will be also zero So next what we want to do is we want to connect our, our timer to our application. So we have set the timer event to 10 milliseconds. So double click on your timer and it will automatically generate the timer function for you. So what we do, want to do here is if is active is true or, or the timer has already started we must make sure our centiseconds increases. So let's write if is active is true curly brackets time cs also increases one by one so as you know that time as 100 centiseconds is equal to one second we must make sure when our centiseconds is equal or bigger than 60 our time seconds should start so let's write inside the if statement if time cs is bigger or equal to 60 curly brackets time min sorry to this time seconds should increase one by one and time centiseconds should be back to zero as it as the timer should be started again so we must write a code in here when time seconds is when time seconds is bigger or equal to zero 60 we must increase time minutes so if time seconds is 
bigger or equal than 60 curl brackets time min time min should increase one by one and time sec should be back to zero next what we have to do is we have to draw our time on our three labels so let's write the function draw time so write draw time brackets semicolon and hit control dot to generate and draw time function So this will be our draw time function which will be generated automatically. So delete this extra part and let's write the code for label centiseconds. So label ct dot text equals so we are going to format this as a string according to the time string. string dot format semicolon and zero dot zero zero we should have two upper commas between them comma and time centiseconds Next, I'm going to copy and paste this exact same code. So, copy and paste this two times. So, this should be label seconds. And this should be time seconds. The last one should be minutes label min and th this time should be minutes so now we have completed our code for our stopwatch so let's see if it works so pre press start And this will be our stopwatch application. So when we start, our timer will start automatically. And when we press the stop button, the, our timer, our stopwatch will stop. And if you need to preset it, just press the preset button. So that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. So make sure you like and subscribe my channel and I see you in my next video.